Hello guys, I would like to talk about what you need to get started with building model kits if you're completely new to this or if you've snapped kits in the past and wish to paint them and do more to them. I understand with a lot of people they tell you what tools you need and a very very rough outline of what you need to do but I find this isn't good enough. A lot of people still want me to hold their hand, uh, explain every process, watch them do it completely and understand people need more confidence when attempting models. They feel that there's a chance that they'll screw it up and there's no way of going back when they build their model or when they're damaged it's completely gone or gone for God. Uh, we'll just have a little, we'll have a little talk about uh, how to get started. First thing of course that's really really important is tools. Uh, if you watch my very first video you'll see what tools you need, uh, what expense, uh, you will spend roughly the same amount of mo uh, money that you'd spend on the kit for your tools so you will have to let out that expense and you need to care for your tools if your knives are getting blunt you need to replace the knife ends don't try to stretch your life out if your tools are getting damaged you need to replace them you need to look after your tools and the most important tool that's easily damaged is your airbrush and your paintbrush general care for your airbrush we'll get into that in the future because that's a very extensive topic with your paintbrush, there's a few simple rules. You always try to keep the tip. You never leave the tip in the water and lean it on there. When you're dipping your brush into paint, only half the bristles should be submerged in paint, not the entire bristle. That stiffens the base of the bristles and your brush is going to go to God. Um, if you're going to spend money on your brushes, that's very important. If you wish to learn more, look it up online. Artists are very anal about their brushes, so you can read all night about it. I don't want to go into it. And care of your paint and your stock. With your thinner, replace the lids. Thinner evaporates very easily, contaminates very easily. Same with your cement, same with super glues. With your paint, when you're using it, stir extensively. If you use it straight out of the bottle, you're going to get nasty streaks or gloss streaks. If you shake it, you're going to get little paint in the grooves of your bottle and it's going to be difficult to open or watch my bottle opening tutorial and of course some people don't wash their brushes properly they transfer paint from pot to pot contaminates mix the color you're not going to have an accurate color and of course when mixing paints use it on a separate palette or use a separate clean container very simple with uh, scale modelling, I know with military modelling, they're very, very serious, very anal about research. When you're building a certain plane or a tank or a figure, you need to research how perfect it is from the actual real time, the colours, whatnot. Very important in Gundam as well, or your mech modelling. But the beautiful thing is, if you wish to build your own thing or be creative, that's perfectly acceptable. But if you're going in competitions, you will be penalised for this unless you show sufficient research. But if you do want to build a perfect RX-78, the perfect Zaku, the perfect whatever you want, it's very easy to go online, get basic research, pictures, colour schemes, because I guarantee you what the instructions state, how the model comes together, and how it looks, is most of the time not very accurate to what's in the animation. Now, with the animation, it's 2D various uh, timelines in the anime or when the anime was made it is different quality different artists if it's CG if it's hand painted you're going to see the same Zaku in 20 different shapes 20 different colors now you could choose whatever timeline you wish to build it but you need to be strict to it or you can go on your own route and paint it however you wish another thing is time a lot of people want to build something when they're snapping a kit, they can have a kit done in three hours. And then they don't understand why it will take three weeks, three months to build the model. So when they're building it, most likely they're going to be rushing with their Gundam markers and splashing paint on them, finishing them in the weekend. This is perfectly fine. If you're happy with that on your shelf, fantastic. If you want a little more detail or you want it to look nicer or show off your friends, go to competitions care and time is required. Take your time, there is no rush. You're spending a lot of money on these Bandai kits. They're a bloody monopoly. They cost a fortune if you're going to be painting them and be quite serious with them. Make them the best you can. If you don't want to, who cares? It's your model, up to you. Never let someone bully you into a style. 
Now, a lot of people bitch about the complexity of a kit. Oh, it's a master grade, it's a perfect grade, it's very difficult to build. If you're snapping these things, a seven-year-old can snap together a perfect grade under supervision of a parent or something. It's, it's that easy. You're following instructions. If you're following instructions, you can do anything. Now, these Bandai kits are designed to be snapped together. They're designed to be collector toys or playthings. Once a scale model is get into it, we have to tackle the challenge of paint being scratched and seam lines and whatnot, which is not what it's designed to be. And we're turning a toy or something that's designed to be turned into a toy into a model kit. Some of us enjoy the challenge, some of us just want a model of a Gundam and find this is a hassle. That's life. And another thing is style. You'll notice many people have different style how they finish their kits. People splash out on hundreds of dollars on resin parts, resin pieces, stick it to their kit, hide most of their kit in this crab, and you've got a four, five hundred dollar high grade model with big club crap all over it, uh, metal thrusters and whatnot. Other people like to be quite creative and use putty styrene and get something completely creative or off the wall or something quite accurate for this style, which is ten times more difficult but also a lot more satisfying. Some people wish to model their models in a certain way, colour, weathering form, heavy, heavy weathering to look realistic or perfectly clean out of a showroom. Don't look at a model and think that's the standard, that's how everybody builds their kits. Look at different styles, try the different styles, stick to your own style, develop your own style, have fun, show it off. Some people are going to love it, but if you're going to vary onto a very strict style or a very different style, people will criticize your model. That's the fact that I have to face with. Also, in the future, um, now you're going to buy yourself a model kit. I recommend you buy something in no grade, a first grade, whatever, $10, $15. Don't splash out a lot of money. Practice using tools, practice using cement, build something fail, succeed, whatever. If you fail, you paint it poorly, you build it poorly, you can always strip back the paint. I'll teach you how to do it. Repaint it, rebuild it. If you don't like it anymore, we can chop it up, use it for parts for customizing. Next few videos, in the future after I return, which I was talking about in my previous video, I will be going to Japan. I'm going to be building this guy. Um, here's a no-grade kit from X Gundam. The very go. Uh, he's a little complex guy. He's roughly the quality of a high grade or a little higher. He has moving parts. His torso can separate to expose a cannon. His arms extend. He's got a lot going on to him plus a, a fairly interesting colour. I'm going to do an out of the box of him. We're going to copy his colour. We're going to build him as is. No modifications. I'll take you every step of the way of this kit, mostly on camera, some off camera, and we're going to build this kit by selecting the pieces, snapping the pieces together, studying him, researching him, filling seam lines, priming him, painting him. We will do a kit together from start to finish, and I hope you learn a lot from it, or for your more experienced modelers, nitpick at it, learn something, exchange comments, tell me what I'm doing wrong. The best thing about scale model, there is no wrong way of doing something unless someone's going to troll you because they stick to a certain style. So in the end, they're wrong for bullying you in the first place. I hope you learned a little something about this video and the most important thing I'm trying to tell you is have the confidence. Buy a kit, build a kit, please post it, show it to me, show it to people. You'll learn, once you get the basic idea how these things work, watch video, my videos, watch other people's videos, read how to model, go on a forum, and keep sharing until your skills slowly develop. Your models are not going to be brilliant straight off the bat, and if you are, good for you. It's going to be a long, long journey if you plan to being a scale modeler. Thank you for watching this, and we'll see you in a few months. Till next time.